All right, chat. In case you don't know what we're going to do today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, all the RLCSs that have happened, all the RLCS Worlds events. I didn't want to say LAN events because that kind of didn't happen in 2020. So all the RLCS events that have happened thus far, I know a lot of people have been introduced to Rocket League somewhat recently. Uh, within maybe like the past few years, two years, I would say that's pretty recent. So we're going to take a, a look at, uh, you know, we're going to have a little blast from the past here. I have all these tabs open because I have so much to show you. So much to share. This is RLCS Season 1, which is weird because I'm not there. Might be a bug. Somehow Quinlob Dell qualified over me. Not sure how that happened. All good though. But the RLCS Season 1 was a little different. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but basically this is the first time that splits were ever a thing. There was an qual open qualifier, then you made it to the first split, and then there's an open qualifier for the second one, then you made it to the second split. Combine your points, boom, top four go to the uh, the finals, which was only eight teams, and it was only NA and EU. We're not actually going to watch every single thing in this series because, you know, it's 50 minutes, and I'm not going to sit here and watch 50 minutes of every single series. But keep in mind, this was the pinnacle. Almost exactly six years ago. Let's see what we got. Cookser, over zero. Batmobile Bros going for it on kickoff. Ball heading for <laughs> Sorry. It's going to take forever if I pause. Right off the bat, I love the intro to the grand finals is a Batmobile Bros going for the kickoff. Towards high by Powers territory. They're going to be able to set this one out. Kenobi follows his own setup. Leaves it to midfield. Over zero pops it out to the middle. Ball going towards the box. Oh, yeah. Closely. Look Looks at the gameplay. Now Marky Duda able to pop it out to Mike. Puts it out to the center. Here comes flip side on the offense. I think I think the worst part about this is they have the crowd noise from in-game instead of really hearing the audience. Like the actual crowd that they have, you hear the in-game crowd more. Wow! It's just constantly, wow, wow! It does not look like my gameplay right now. Shut up. Going to happen, so he just tried to read it as well. I don't think but director cam was even a thing. Yeah. So I mean, you you can see there's just so many differences. So first off, um, yeah, you can hear that. Wow, wow, wow! Every single time the ball is hit just hard enough, there's always a wow. They don't even have like the crowd sound. And also, speaking of the crowd, this land event, I don't know if they actually show it somewhere here, maybe, but this land event was actually hosted in a nightclub. <laughs> what they would do is. In the middle of the day, we would have the LAN event on Saturday. Basically, people were practicing there on Friday. They would need to move the entire setup, store it somewhere else. The nightclub would go on Friday night. They would come back in the morning, set all the PCs up, do the Saturday broadcast, move all the PCs again, and then they would have the nightclub Saturday night, and then wake up in the morning, and then set the PCs back up for Sunday, <laughs> Championship Sunday, and then remove them all quickly. Yeah, and that's another thing. You said Sticky Floors Pause Champ. Literally, the floors were sticky in this place. But this land event, if you look at the prize pool, $55,000 with 27,500 bucks, big ones, going to the winner. Split that, you know, you get about 9K each. And nowadays it's a little different. Everybody watch carefully. This, this is insane, okay? This is season one. This is, uh, this is a year after the game release. This is peak. This is literally peak. Get ready. in the winner's bracket. I, my power needs it to stay alive. Oh no! No! Defense and I by power, not things you usually talk about. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, 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 oh baby! Yeah. We got a game five. What was this Wait, is this it? Is this it? Wait, watch, watch. Now watch. This is this is where it comes in. This is this is the actual peak moment. You ready? Watch Lucinio and Cronovi. This is where it really happens. With that Batmobile spinning and ah! No, no, the mechanics. Come on, guys. That, that <laughs> Get your head in the game. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, come on. Ah, oh, you're there, messing there things up here. Something. Like, it's literally a nightclub stage. It, it's so crazy to, like, look back at this. And I remember I remember being here, and, like, I think I was talking to Turtle or Garrett. I went up to, one, I went up to them and said, hey. And I said something like, I think it was Turtle. And I was like, oh, yo, what's up? I'm Rizzo. And he goes, what? <laughs> and I'm gonna assume he just didn't hear me. And I was like, oh, what's up? I'm Rizzo. And he goes, oh, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I just thought I should just share that because you guys like to rag on me. Or Mocket lost to Genesis, so Mocket was turbo. I'm pretty sure I specifically remember 
Turbo being emo about losing to Quinn Lobdell in class. Uh, oh, Classics wasn't there. No, Quinn Lobdell then. He's like, oh, I lost to Quinn Lobdell. Which is fair. Losing to Quinn has got to be, got to be the worst. Anyway, we don't talk about how I almost qualified through Quinn. This is season two. Yep, we're at season two now. And this is actually the first uh, RLCS lane that I qualified for. So you got Flipside again, returning as he the number one seed. Flipside replaced Mike with Greasy. This is also KDOP's first LAN appearance on Precision Z. Queen Laudel got replaced by Classics, and I can't remember, I think there's a replacement here. We can take a peek at the, the finals, but the finals are like, I mean, it's just kind of a whooping. All right, a little bit of background here. I, uh, in the first split of RLCS season one, the team was me, Insolences, and Low Five. And then the second split, Low Five was like, I'm too old for this, I'm leaving. And then we grabbed Zane Jackie from, can't remember his team name. And then so we didn't qual qualify in season one through the second split, but we made it in season two. Best and so we're all, we're all just happy to be there. And this is young KDOT, by the way. So basically the reason why I wanted to show this series is I think this is the first, well, the first time KDOT and I faced off and also the only time I think I ever beat him. Home, let's find out who is who. <laughs> so we have take three in the orange, precision Z in the blue. Skyline sets it up off the backboard and Siki watches. He'll move in and take the shot. He puts on the backboard again. Kadoff up for the third touch. He'll get it. Uh, yo, dude. Riz. Precision Z in the blue. Riz man, Riz man. Off the backboard and Siki oh, has to be you, Lil bro. Has to be you. <laughs> Just he'll move in and take the shot. He puts on the backboard again. Kadoff up for the Gotta be touch. you, he'll man. Gotta be you. Kadoff now in the air. Sends this one downfield. Rizzo will send it to the side and allow his teammates to come in behind Wow! Him. So they still have the wow sound effect in season two. He tries to wrap it around one more they time. haven't figured that one out yet. Try to get this one. Pops it off the backboard. Out to Zane Jackie. Puts it high in the air. Too much power on it. Rizzo will have come to Come on, take three. Show well. some life. Sends it out for Zane Jackie, who misses. Oh, wow. Yeah, baby! Rizzo ties the game. We just and it was really just that easy. Onto the post. Is so that Dylan? The wall, Rizzo? Game three. Is that him? We have to do it right now. Everything on the line. Nobody in the back. Zane Jackie with ball. Control. It's open. It's open. Your score. Another one in, and as it hits the final seconds, it's all over for Precision Z. Take three keeps America alive. Somehow, Take three is able to keep this up. A team we never expected. Precision Z. They gave it all they had. They showed so well early on, but they just weren't able to deal with whatever Aww. Take three brought to the table in this series. They. Yeah. Um. And they got shit on in this tournament, by the way. I think I think this is where people started to say like EU was just so dominant and stuff. Number one seed went out in fifth, sixth, and then you could see here the other NA team seventh, eighth, and then we were the only ones left. Then we got fourth, and people were like EU so good. Are right, we back? Where are we? We're at season three. So there is there is something specific I wanted to show in this one. Um, there are more teams now. This is the introduction of OCE. OCE was the first other region besides NAEU uh, who got in. They got two spots right off the bat. And it was weird because they had 10 teams now, so they had to do this in a weird way. So they had the EU EU 4 seed play against the OCE 2 seed, and then the NA 4 seed play against the OCE 1 seed. And then so OCE came in and beat the NA 4 seed right off the bat. But before that, I was on take 3 season 2. We went to, or I went to, G2 afterwards. Yeah, Zane and Insult didn't stay a team. Zane Jack ended up going with Espeon and Vince. I honestly cannot remember where Insult went. Oh, he went to Genesis. And this team, this team was a whole, uh, a whole mess. <laughs> you, you remember I said Insult was a tilter? Well, he teamed with two other tilters. So that, that whole team just imploded on itself. But besides that, uh, I, I went to G2. Uh, so you can see here, which is a little weird. You don't see G2 here. I, you know, I just left my team. And I didn't make a land event. You would you would assume if you leave your team, you would be positive you'd make a land event. Well, it's funny you ask. I was I was so sure that we would make the land event. So we ended up going four and three in the season, fifty-two percent win rate. Played two games here. We went two zero, and then we had a bye week here, and we were here. So we go through here. So we're three zero now in series uh, for the season. We win here. STDX was a free win, guaranteed. We still went to game five. All good though. Uh, so we're four zero in the season. Uh, five wins basically guarantees in these old formats. Five five wins guarantees you the land event so we win four we lose the next one to take three right here and all we needed all we needed was like a few more game wins and we would have been fine one more game one more series win or a few more game wins and we would have taken atelier's spot this series right here i have a very specific memory that i don't think i'll ever forget i still wake up uh wake up uh sweating at times thinking about it 
three is there holding on to their lead. Jane Abso so close with the angle. So win winning this game, uh, we would have gone to game, game five. Here on Manfield, Zane Jackie will and we would have gotten the game the win, and the game win could have benefited us. And he get it out of his own corner. I explain right a little now. bit. So much pressure. Rizzo with the opportunity puts it high. Little high. Eskion on the backboard. Play that one away. Cronovi now back into the box. Both Zane and Vince up, but they get the hard clear. Buying them time to get back on the ground and get resituated. The kilowatt Spiralis, iconic car design. To pick it up. Would have been a difficult angle anyways. It's Vince now with ball control. Jibbles it past two, puts it in front of the net. An excellent setup from Vince. Oh, look at Crow going for the demo. Off. Final 17 seconds of the game. Does G2 go home here? Or are they able to send us to game five? The shot Ooh. from Jane Epps blocked. All right, big save. Espion Crow going for a shot. Somehow Zane saves it. Another block. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Wait, Rizzo has a chance. He's going to put it away. And it hits the ground at zero seconds. Are you serious? Has to be you, little guy. Has to be you. Are you serious? <laughs> Can we run back season three? What? Come on. Seriously? You know, maybe if that one went in, we had a chance. That is uh, one of the more memorable moments of our attempt to qualifying in season three. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, obviously, we uh, didn't qualify. So this is the actual uh, bracket. Flipside ended up going in season two and winning the whole thing. Flipside were still very hyped. And energy got... Sixth place, fifth, sixth place. They did not have a good performance. Like fifth, sixth place nowadays is good. Fifth, sixth back then was like you're basically lost. Actually, yeah, season three was where um, I first met John, Rob, and Mike in person. Also, I remember. Oh. Look at that, look at that peak. Yeah, I remember meeting all them, and then Rob had like a room at the W, because he's rich. And I'm, he actually, actually, it wasn't even just a room at the W, this guy got a suite. So like, that's why I thought he was so rich. And yeah, he, he got a suite that I remember he was like hanging out in his suite. I was like, this is so fucking cool. I was like, oh my, this is so cool, Rocket League's awesome. But yeah, I mean, even, even look at this, like look at the gameplay here. It's like... It, it seriously does not look that much different than like season one. I think the biggest difference you can notice is people are going off the walls more. Also, balls are contested a lot more just in mid. That's like the biggest thing. People learn that they can hit the ball off the backboard. Like they're your own backboard to save it. You know, you don't have to only hit the ball forward. They're like, it's it's the smallest thing. It's not like, oh, people are doing flipper sets. Now they're doing double flipper sets. Fun fact about season three. Give you another fun fact here. They uh, they gave out goodie bags. The goodie bags had like a they had like some Rocket League thing in it. They had an Old Spice spray deodorant, and they had a cup of noodles. <laughs> I'm not trolling. They just had a single cup of noodles with Old Spice and like a, a little tiny Rocket League memoir thing. I don't know. I don't even know what it was. And I think that was also the season where the hotel rooms had microwaves, so it was it was peak. Speaking of peak, this is the iconic moment I'm talking about. This is such a crazy fake of like a... With Fireburner's demo at the same time. It was like legit just like perfect timing. And everybody just went nuts. Everybody lost their mind seeing this. I think this was the start of the rise of Garrett G right here. I signed your cup of noodles. <laughs> Please send me a picture of that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Calm down, guys. Now everybody's going quiet. It's like, what's happening? Energy in the gutter. GG's. Energy! Listen to that crowd. Bro, they used to have the mic so close to the crowd. Another thing that I want to show that actually that really sticks out to me is this series here. Flipside versus Selfless. I won't say what about it. I remember Back so distinctly. Every single game so far. But we'll watch. Oh, by the way, 
Selfless. Okay, so you know, flip, you know, the whole thing about Flipside. Flipside being the goats. They're, expe you know, they just won the last season. They're expected to do really well. Selfless is like, you know, how people talk about like young players now. Selfless was probably like the youngest team at this time, and Timmy was like straight 15, could only play on weekends. His parents didn't let him, and like that sort of like that sort of thing. So like this team couldn't even scrim, and they were they were like all prodigies like seeing this these guys what I, what I remember specifically so much about selfless is they were just so quick they were so fast to everything and they were accurate but look he just full speed to that ball a lot of people were still like feathering their aerials at that time but not selfless they just went straight at it and they were accurate that's when that's when people were like and even though Cooks almost had a I honestly think like Breezy up, and like Selfless were a part of like people figuring out how to aerial more accurately and like quicker because they would not let go of boost. One goal to put themselves into the lead to grab themselves further into the bracket. Like this, this was Selfless. This was Selfless. All right. One goal is needed for flip side. Let's see it. So What's happening? The reason The reason I remember this so vividly is because I remember it as legitimately the biggest throw I've ever seen. Teams and that might be it there as a goal. Oh, what? Off the goal line, Marky Duna. Not going to get that for a goal. As Flipside just misses out on a goal there. And Selfless pulls this one back down into their end. A shot off the post there. Dapper. Oh, what? Crazy Meister. Gets Dude. Alive. My heart can't beat this anymore. <laughs> okay, this, is, this game is more insane than I remember. Showing for that pass. He'll be up quick. He does off the back. Oh, no. There, I remember oh, that. Dude. Dude. Just seeing, just seeing this visual. This is like, this is like a Thanos snap. <laughs> it's the end for you. Like seeing this in 2016, 17, you knew it was over, bro. Cuxer with a double setup, it was, it was done. It was done. Oh, I just had a shiver go down my spine when I saw that. He's just standing there. Menacingly. He really was that guy. Look at him. He really was just that guy. That's insane. Marky takes off his headset. <laughs> that, is, that is so legendary, bro. Oh my god. Alright, season four. There's one obvious one that I need to show. So this is season four. We did make this event. You could see us here. Bang. Just like that. Uh, OCE still here. No Sam introduced yet. Um, and this was this was around the time of the Gale Force era. Gale Force just dominated everything. Also, E League was after this event. I, it's top eight. It was top eight. It's because Chiefs was at E League. I'm pretty sure there was like this rumor. I'm not gonna show a bunch of E League stuff. I, I only want to show RLCS stuff today. But there's like it, it wasn't a rumor. It was like yo yo. If you make top eight, you're going you're getting invited to E League. And it's like the prize pool is like huge. I think the winner of E League. 70,000. So this is like, this is like juicer. 150,000 for first, or sorry, 150,000 prize pool. So people knew that like first place was going to get a lot. So you wanted to get the invite just because. Dude, season four worlds, 55,000 for the win. People knew there was a bigger prize pool for E-League. So you, you wanted to make top eight. So yeah, people were like, oh yeah, yeah I got to make E-League. So people really wanted to just get past this first series. And I think there were, there were a lot of nerves in this tournament because of that in the first rounds, for sure. I don't think we're going to watch a full series of this one but let's watch season four he almost had a touch just fell short i hope the pressure's not building up too much on him now the final minute this was the score line in game three cloud nine unable to take it but squishy now Ooh. Ooh. he's been going for this this is the iconic squishy moment this is this is just an iconic moment in Rocket League, because this is really, even though he didn't get a flip reset, he went off the ceiling to keep his flip. So this is like one of the first 
moments where that sort of happened. Patch 1.19, June 20th, 2016. So this is when flip resets were introduced to the game. I don't think it was when the, the map came out. I think it was like a little bit after. So just assume 2016. So Neo Tokyo came out. There were ramps on the side of the map. So if you went off, if you went off the ramp, you didn't have a flip. Um, and then so when they realized that like that was really hard, they made, they changed the game. They actually like added a mechanic on an accident to where if you um, fall off of a surface, you keep your flip for an infinite amount of time. And so this is where flip, flip resets were always a thing because if you hit the ball with four wheels, you would get a flip reset. But you wouldn't keep your flip longer than 1.5 seconds. And so when they added this map, they realized that it was very hard. And then now if you just fly off the ramp or if you fall off the ceiling, you can keep your flip forever because you never used your first one. And so um, this was added in 2016. And this was really the first time that somebody hit a shot like this. So 2017, November 2017. So it took about like maybe a year and a half or something like that, or like a year for somebody to really make use of it. Oh, I remember. Okay, so I remember seeing this. So I actually remember seeing this series and people were talking and they were just like, this is the best Rocket League like ever played. Like this is so fast and like precise. And pe like this this series was like a, a like kind of another game changer in that sense where like everybody was just going so quickly. It, it was just crazy to watch. The I'm speed the speed on this series this was nuts. You will see when these two teams meet. We did you literally just hear what he said? It was it was just so quick. Every they were just on every single ball. Turbo, what do you do? You work some magic? Oh, we missed. Oh, GG. Turbo takes advantage. All good. All good. And because you're so panicked, because the game is going so fast, it's very Dude. easy to make the wrong decision. But Vine Panda is full of correct ones. Dude, pass. Panda's Vine the goat. Carrying across the entire Server, you got carried. Looking at like uh, season one, you can easily tell the difference. Like people are trying, like you can see a lot of attempt to do attempt. An air dribble, you know. He went for it. Didn't really work out. They're on like every ball. People are saving boost and net. They're not just rotating like. Uh, with zero boost back and only going for big boost like there's there's like the slow adaptation that people are figuring out over the and it's only been a year and a half even though i'm saying that i still do think the biggest jump was from rlcs x to this season uh because one i was no longer in the league so the skill gap just improved instantly no but e even seriously like everybody it just it's insane i, I don't even know how to explain it everybody's just insane now everybody can do anything they want as long as the defender doesn't get in the way. Season five. This is this one had this land had a lot of significance because complexity is um, method. This is Justin's rookie season. Grabbed by energy, he just took Jacob's spot, and everybody thought he was he's the new wave. You know, he was he was the prodigy of the time. Yeah, energy rookie season. Justin goes through. Or energy goes through. They get bracket reset. They end up Ling. You can see it right here. All good. All good. I don't actually think it's necessary to even watch a part of the series of this one. I think it's just better if I show you the um, best goals. So remember what I was saying about how the last, you know, people didn't really figure out like double touching off. They were just barely double touching off the wall, going for air dribbles. Flip resets still weren't really a thing. Well, season five was a little different. Seven of the 10 shots are from this, are from these. This is NRG also, and also like nine of them are from those two teams. Just able to clear the lines. But only for a brief second, because Justin is going to win it for NRG! Take this the entire Justin. lane. Is this one more opportunity for NRG? It's going to be off the backboard. Turbo, not there in time! Turbo! Oh, wait. Gary, my man! <laughs> this, okay. This was not those teams. Obviously, it's Devo. Dude, this, I remember seeing this in person. I, I, I honestly think, like, this was the, like, one of the, like the greatest shots of all time. I don't think people talk about this one enough. This, this is why people quickly, bring up Devo back from back in the day. Try to keep coming on, but absolutely nobody from NRG was taking the bait. Devo up high. That is gonna drop down five. That is so. That is so disgusting. Are you kidding me, Devo? That goal still holds up to this day. I had so many questions about 
Deva, but a shot like that off the back. That is literally a 2022 goal. Like some of these other shots don't even hold up, but Devo still does. Wants to go the long way. Next goal is the RLCS World Championship. No, look away. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Turbo. Good bump, Turbo. Wait, 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 wait. No. <laughs> oh my God. That, that that one that one still holds up too. That one holds up. Turbo's in every goal. <laughs> And obviously, this one's still played. This one is still used for free likes and stuff on Twitter to this day. Insane. But yeah, that I think that best explains Season 5, honestly. Uh, Rizzo, side note here. Uh, you know how this whole thing happened of like this crazy bracket reset and... You know, 12 games played and uh, most iconic goals. If you look here, G2 Esports. Oh, 03 complexity. Okay. And oh, lost. Okay. Two to three. Interesting. So yeah, I left. I left the venue. I wasn't there. I didn't actually see any of that. This is the one. OC it got top four and people were like, oh, okay. It's worth it. Like other regions can do something sort of thing. So that's definitely like one of the moments through here. And also, I think it was also when Energy lost. Yeah, Energy lost to Chiefs. And they just lost to Cloud9, which is like... So Energy losing to Chiefs here was like, oh god. What happened? So Chiefs went through PSG, Energy, EG, and then lost to Cloud9. G2 versus Flipside. This is the final RLCS LAN that Cux played. And... It is also the last LAN that Crow played on G2. Do you want to show one moment from this? But I mean, look at look at the look at the gameplay now. Again, every season looks so different. It's significant. JNAP's pop. Well, wait, 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 Mystic! Absolutely dunked on! Oh my God! Fifth goal, fifth goal of the series in Game Three. Still not enough. All good though. Yeah, I was ahead of the meta, but one, I actually just remember this because it was me. But also, it proves my point of season five and six were turning points of like when people started to air dribble, catch the ball, double touch. That's when like mechanics actually started to be like a thing that you see today. Also, look at the team play from JNAP. I remember him calling me, he's gonna pop it up for me. So it's like the team play is coming together with the mechanics. So yeah, that was also my best goal ever and the peak of my career. Okay, I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that the plays have developed since then. That I can't believe that is a number five, but that just goes to show like what was being done then and what was considered impressive. Now this is first off, it's cringe, and second off, that is not really that impressive anyway. It's just an it's just an air dribble. He didn't even air dribble. He just popped it. Look, he didn't even touch it again. But it was a smart play nonetheless. What a brutal play! This is this has been a thing since like. I don't even know, bro, the, the the caveman era. But it was never done in RLCS. And the person who was named after actually did it. Well, because, you know, it's his shot. But it was actually done, and it was him, so it was even better. He did the thing! He did it! He used to practice this all the time. He used to stream and you would just see him practicing it. And, and actually, even just at LAN events, like if you would just go behind him, he'd be practicing it. Another squishy shot. And that one hit off to the side. Cloud9 mounting an assault. Wait, mechanics evolution. Squishy pounces to himself. Boom. Right there. Another squishy shot. Why not? Substantially struggling in game two. Mama gets this one away. Squishy's airborne, keeping it here in the midfield. Give Why not? Squishy? Why not? Oh my the evolution oh my is here. The Squishy has arrived. Oh, yep. There it is. Season five and six. That's when everything changed. And that was when I started bumping.
Uh, this is season seven. Okay, so this is in New Jersey. I don't think there's really anything significant that I can remember. Oh, 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 actually, wait. Look, Sam. This is the first time Sam was introduced into RLCS. But also, I mean, I remember being, like, from my perspective, I remember being the underdogs playing versus Vitality and then beating them, which that was Pog. There is one moment I remember as, like, literally the best feeling I think I've ever had playing Rocket League. I was trying to make this a little, like, more broad and not about me, but I do remember this specifically. I remember this one very specifically. I said, go ahead and shine, big man. Let him know who you are. Let him know your name. Oh, let him know. Yeah, I said, let me slip into that knapsack real quick. So I was talking about, like, the best feeling ever. I think just, like, winning, winning a series, like, that's cool and all. But being able to win a series when you're, like... You're in this impossible comeback situation. It's a it's a whole whole different feeling, which is, should be obvious, but I I don't even know how to describe it. So we were down 0-2 with like a minute and a half left. We end up tying this at 42 seconds. Actually, honestly, it's everything. I'll just explain it after. <laughs> Dude, I I still get I still get chills watching that. Actually, actually, just dude, I think I think my reaction explained it so well. If you just watch my cam. <laughs> it was like, dude, I just I just like released all my energy at that very moment. Like, let's fucking go! I was like losing my damn mind uh, with that. Oh my god. But anyway, the, the whole, what I was saying, like the best moment I ever remember is, is that. Being down 0-2, minute and a half left, whatever. We end up uh, tying, coming back, and then scoring at zero seconds. All while being the underdogs in this. That's why I, I don't think there was any better feeling than that goal. Okay, so uh, another thing. So, uh, like Lawler said, NA went 2-0 in every single group. So that was significant because everybody always said EU better. And then uh, Vitality won. <laughs> Did Sam get a win? Sam did not get a win. So the minor regions all win 2 Yeah, now look at Furia. Buddha. Buddha, Buddha. Season 8. This is... Let me show you this real quick. I wasn't making this about me, but... We fucking sucked. We went all the way to the grand finals in season 7. And then I, in the blink of an eye, we were in dead last in the relegation tournament. But that wasn't the craziest thing. Because C9 was right there with us. How did it happen? I have no idea. Legitimately, no clue. We were the big three in season seven. And it's not even that, like, that much time went by. So it's like, a few months went by. And then we were just, like, dead last. And same with Cloud9. It was like, both teams just, it was the same exact thing. It was so odd. I think the difference here is the people who did make worlds, these guys were all, uh, again, like, young prodigy type deals. Now that I'm thinking about it. This was the season where Turbo actually came from EU to move to NA. So this is like the first, maybe not the first, but definitely the first relevant international roster move where an EU player went to NA or NA went to EU, whatever, vice versa. And then uh, these guys, these guys were all young up and comers. These guys just won DreamHack Montreal again versus us, second place. Arsenal came from RLRS, or he was in RLRS and then got picked up by this team. He took Sathu's spot and Sipical was just a beast who played 16 hours a day. Rank grinder, again. So it's like all these young up-and-comers were just like showing up while, you know, you could say like G2 and C9 were just um, playing how they played. I honestly think Season 8 typical was kind of the start to where people would catch the ball on the backboard and air dribble it all the way to your side. I think that was typical. So this is Sam's first series win versus Freaky Flame and Cassio. Minor region, no more. The infamous own goal. Oh, no way. I forgot about that. This is definitely one of the most iconic moments of this land. Screw the inter inter <laughs> international uh, player change. Screw the meta shifts. This this is what I remember from this event. I was just sitting there drinking White Claws the whole time. <laughs> Season 8, baby. Uh-oh. Wait, this looks familiar. <laughs> it's so bad. What? It's so bad. 
have to move my cam. Just look at it. Just look at Renegade's cams for this. Look at Torsos. Look at Sicky. <laughs> I'm only laughing because it's it's a, it's way in the past, bro. Don't worry about it. All good. Sicky's like, oi, my bad, mate. Oh, poor guy, man. Torsos is in shambles. Has to be you, Torsos. Has to be you. I'm awkward, I'm awkward. Has to be you. Has to be you. Help, 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 help. No. <laughs> that is so sad, bro. I would be heartbroken if I lost like that. Oh, it's just in my net. <laughs> and then we're all aware of what happened in the dreaded season nine. This is a little weird. There wasn't there wasn't a world finals. There wasn't an international land. This is in 2020. Uh, so this is when COVID first popped up. So the grand finals instead was split into, basically every region had a finals event. And the regions that were involved at the time were EU, NA, OCE, and SAM. So like you played the season and then if you did well in the season, you made a playoffs to kind of play as like a one last tournament as like the kings of EU, OC, NA, whatever, whatever. So there wasn't, um, there wasn't a land event. Go back to me. Season seven, we got second place. Season eight, we were in the relegation tournament. And then season nine, we did well. We ended up finishing the season in second place with SSG in first. SSG went eight and one this season. Energy got fourth, C9 got fifth. So SSG got their only loss to Sonics, apparently. Well, actually, Sonics finished third. So I don't even really know what happened in EU. But there's not, there wasn't like a huge change here. I think, yeah, Vitality dropped Scrub and then they grabbed Alpha and then Scrub went to Mouse. Wait, but yeah, I mean, 2020, which is weird because I remember so much about a lot of the other ones. But realistically, 2020 feels like a, like a blur to me, like all the other seasons. But Season 9 and Season X, I don't really remember anything too specific. The games were on ESPN, and so they grabbed Landon Donovan to reach a more general audience. But I do remember a specific moment of him just being like, they were trying to have commentary on something, and it was just he was just like, uh, have you like had anything similar to this? And then they moved on because like it was an awkward silence. And he goes, I, I played indoor. Yeah, then they were talking about indoor soccer because he played indoor soccer. And it was just like, okay. Arju, so it's Astral number one. You better be number one if you guys are hyping this thing up. Five gifted if it's not. All right, deal. Damn. Not really committing. They're not willing to commit too risky on these passes. Astral, double touch to the backboard. You kill pretty oh, okay. Astral just done everything. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Even at zero oh seconds, jeez. Zero seconds. Oh god, that was gross. <laughs> oh my god, I don't think I ever saw that goal. I don't think I've ever seen that. Okay, okay, EU was better. Okay, but like, like you're right, I'm not gonna argue with you, but I'm just saying that was obvious because of number five on NA. Come on. Okay, and then season X. Still the, the minor regions are OC and Sam. They haven't introduced the other regions yet because that was all this season. Best moment of season nine? <laughs> I forgot about this. One of the most fun in the series I've had in WoW GG's energy because we went to game seven. A lot of fun. One more dub and the title is yours, Pog Chomp. SSG and six. Suck my nuts. I said that after we won. Yeah, that, that, that's probably a highlight of season nine then. So uh, this is actually the season where they introduced splits though. And this is also where I left. I said, I'm out. I'm done. Yeah, so I finished out the winner split. Watch fall split regional one G2 versus peeps. First off, I'm not going to watch that because it's probably you clipping on me. <laughs> you won in five. I'm not going to watch that little bro. It's a reverse sweep. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Low boost. Pinch will send this off the ceiling. Bounces down. Illusion. Handling it calmly. Look at the flick on that. <laughs> You're so moly. lucky. You're so lucky, bro. Downtown. Sorry this your career was made off of RNG. <laughs> he said, GG's though. Shut up. What do you like? What do you want from me? GG's though. No, it's all good. A AJ, it's all good. Don't even sweat it. Is there any series from the championship or just a game that you want to watch from EU? Energy reset. No, I'm talking about EU, guys. I think uh, that there's good reason to pick. The finals are pretty boring. You know, I'm going to be honest. I don't really want to watch these. <laughs>
Also, they did best of sets. This was the craziest shit they've ever introduced, and they removed it so quick. Yeah, best of three, best of seven. It was horrible. But the whole thing was that I don't have, like, motivation to play, so it's probably better that you play with somebody who does have motivation, and if worse comes to worse, I could step back in. And so I remember watching these series and most of the spring split. Spring split? Uh, actually, it's mainly the spring split. I remember watching the spring split and being like, oh god, I really hope they do well because I do not want to have to hop back in. <laughs> this RLCS 2021-22 is the like first Worlds event back. The feelings that we all just went through, like looking at, it, looking back at all those and all those land moments and all those hype moments of just seeing people so excited or sad or whatever, it, it's gonna come back. I mean, we've seen it a little bit in the majors, but um, at the world event, I think it's going to show a lot more because, I mean, realistically, like if you if you think about it, you look at it, a lot of these people who you see at this this world event, you probably won't see at the next one. You know, it's like there's a good portion, but you're not gonna see them all. That's kind of just the reality of it. People are going to move or get worse, better, or whatever. So you're going to see a bunch of new faces. Yeah, appreciate the moments. This is the bracket from the Spring Major, which just happened uh, about a month ago. And you can see this season they introduced new regions. Middle East and North Africa, uh, APAC North and South, and Sub-Saharan Africa, which I don't think SSA is not the major. So there's, um, there's one team from APAC and then one team from Middle East who shows up to these events as well. So the, the new regions are there, but at the Worlds event, you're going to see all these regions. Which is dope. That's awesome. That's Pog Champ. But I think it's really, you know, since we've done this for, I don't even know, three hours now. I think it's really cool to see the difference in all the teams. So think about the first World Championship. There's eight teams. Four from NA, four from EU. Jesse qualified. So you can tell times have changed. The first prize pool for Rocket League was $55,000 prize pool for the grand final event. This one is a mere $2,085,000. And so now we have this. If there's one clip and one moment where I was talking about the the whole the play style changes, the meta changes, about how everybody's figured stuff out, mechanics, all that, yada yada yada. If you go through one one summary, uh, it would be this shot. We're gonna finish off this job right here, right now, Tom. Think about all the work these players put in. Oh yeah, here it is. Split. Your backs are Here's the moment. Look at it! Oh my god, it's so gross! They're confident, but why wouldn't you? Dude, when you can like, it, it's it's so ridiculous looking at like all the precision that goes into a shot like that. Just comparing season one. And just like seeing, there's like this little touch he does right before he hits the ceiling as well. That like, right here. He makes sure he like hits the ball just barely to keep it floating. Um, because if he doesn't, then it's going to go straight down. It's going to go down too far and he can't do it. He, he really did use 300 boosts. Yeah, but like this, this little touch, like it, it's so perfect. Lands on it. And dude, it's just, everything about that shot is ridiculous. So precise and... That's the meta now. So, basically, if I had a conclusion for the end of this stream and the end of this video, this shot right here is why I retired. I couldn't do that shit. I ain't ever doing that. I am long gone. Anyway, that's it. Boom. Hope you guys enjoyed my presentation.